Hi everyone. In today's video, I continue with the series of videos that I have been making on mixed methods research designs. If you have missed my previous videos, you can find the links to those videos in the description section below. Please watch those videos as well to get a comprehensive understanding of mixed methods research. So as you probably understand that mixed methods research combines the elements of quantitative and qualitative research. Quantitative data is collected through the use of surveys and experiments, for example, containing numerical measures such as ages, scores and percentages. And qualitative data involves non-numerical measures like beliefs, motivations, attitudes and experiences often derived through interviews and focus group research to gain a deeper understanding of a research question or phenomena. In today's video, I will explain to you one of the uh, mixed methods research designs which is called the exploratory sequential design and I will explain the different steps to it, the advantages and the disadvantages and I will also discuss two examples so that you get a comprehensive understanding and easy understanding of when to use this research and what does it entail. Let's get started. So exploratory sequential design is a mixed method research approach that involves collecting and analyzing qualitative data first, followed by quantitative data. The goal is to explore a phenomena in depth through qualitative methods first and then use the findings from the qualitative data to inform or build a subsequent quantitative phase for validation, generalization or further exploration. So the qualitative phase is conducted first and then it is followed by the quantitative phase. So to use the qualitative insights to inform the development of a quantitative instrument, framework or intervention. For example, a survey will lead to the development of a or a focus group will lead to the development of a quantitative survey questionnaire or an interview will lead to the development of a quantitative survey questionnaire. The two phases are of course connected with the results of the first phase guiding the design and the focus of the second phase. So the first phase is conducted and the findings from that phase guide the design of the quantitative phase. This is typically used when you know little about the topic or when the existing theories and instruments are insufficient. So the steps involved here are the first step is you collect the qualitative data through methods like interviews, focus groups or open-ended surveys. Then you analyze the data to identify the themes, patterns or constructs. Then use these findings to develop hypothesis or refine research questions. The second step is using the qualitative findings to create a quantitative instrument such as a survey or experiment and then define the variables for further testing. You can do a pilot test also of the instrument for reliability and validity if required. The third phase is the collecting the quantitative data to test the instrument or the hypothesis developed in the qualitative phase. Then you can analyze the data statistically to confirm or generalize the findings. The final step is where you combine and interpret results from both the phases to provide a comprehensive understanding of the research problem. Let me take a couple of examples. Let's say you are trying to understand the factors which are influencing the student's mental health. So the qualitative phase you can conduct interviews with students to explore their experiences with stress and coping mechanisms and then identify the common stressors and coping strategies. From there you can develop a survey based on the qualitative findings, which will include the items on identified stressors and coping behaviors. Then administer the survey to a large sample of students to measure the prevalence of these stressors or to assess correlations with mental health outcomes. Another example could be where you are trying to design an intervention to improve the employee productivity in an organization. So what you can do is you can conduct a focus group with employees to explore the workplace challenges and motivational factors. Then use the findings from the focus group to design an intervention or questionnaire for evaluating productivity and engagement. So an example of an intervention to increase productivity could be longer breaks 
or more number of breaks or to have uh, lunch provided or to have um, better uh, air conditioning facilities or lighting facilities or something like that. Then test the intervention's effectiveness or validate the questionnaire with a larger sample of employees to confirm whether the interventions uh, that you uh, found from the focus groups uh, are really effective or not in increasing the employee productivity so that way you confirm the findings of your qualitative research and confirm it with your qualitative quantitative findings see some of the benefits of this kind of a uh, sequential design is that it provides in-depth qualitative insights and broad quantitative generalizability it will allow researchers to adapt the quantitative phase based on the qualitative findings and it is very useful for creating or validating new tools or frameworks for example using the example of employee productivity findings from that research could help you to develop new frameworks to design work schedules which will not only improve employee productivity but also lead to better health and well-being of the employees some of the downsides to this research is that any kind of mixed methods research ex demands expertise in both qualitative and quantitative methods and because there are two to three phases of data collection designing analysis it is very time consuming and also very resource intensive so you have to devote more time more hours more labor uh, more expertise you have to learn the skills you have to learn how to design an instrument then there could be a pilot test involved there could be analysis of data involved and see not only is data analysis important but how deep you go into the data and what kind of findings that you find and how deep are these findings are they in-depth findings because no reviewer or examiner likes to hear about surface findings they want you to go deep into it it is better to for you to go deep into one research question then address two to three research questions on the surface so these are some of the downsides to this so if you found this video useful please like comment share and subscribe so that i can keep making videos for you guys and benefit you using simple and easy explanations and examples. Bye for now.